welcome to processed foods that claim healthy but may not be as healthy as you think. Can you guess about two or such processed foods? In the current era of superfoods, the food industry is using many enticing health claims okay, to attract us to buy their food products. For instance, some of them use claims like it's vegan, it's a clean ingredient, it's a green ingredient. Also, it goes like uh, some of them are like it's low carb, it has no other sugar, it is free from it, free from that. Okay, so the question that you should ask ourselves as consumers, okay, is that are these uh, health claims true or is it just a marketing strategy? Okay, so uh, because the fact that a food has this uh, 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 claims does not mean that it's really a healthy food. So my intention for this video is very simple: is to for us to evaluate four groups of commonly processed uh, fruits on the grocery shops. Okay, then we can make postulations from the health claims to know if the health claims are really true or they're just a marketing strategy. Then the information that we have will serve as a guidance for us when we are making choices at the grocery shop and also to guide our health choices. So let's look at the first food. The first food product we talk today about will be flavored yogurts. So yogurt is consumed in different cultures because it's naturally uh, a healthy product. It gives us um, calcium to support our bone health. Yogurt also are uh, probiotics, so they help us have a good gut health. And also uh, they help us fight inflammation and many other health benefits. Okay. So um, in the quest for food innovation, the food industry developed you know, new yogurt based products and some of these products included flavored yogurt and also uh, fruit on the bottom yogurt. So innovation itself is not a bad thing. It's a good thing. It helps help us to serve the community in different ways. I've been involved in different uh, food innovation projects. Okay? But the question is that food innovation should always lead to improved human health. My personal principle is that uh, a food's basic primary function is that it sustains our lives it helps us replenish ourselves and also they protect us from developing uh, the, the diseases, okay? So if a food is not meeting any of its primary uh, basic functions, then to me, it's not a smart way of innovation. Flavored or food on the bottom of your world can contain unbelievable amounts of other sugars, even in their small servings. For instance, if you look at a 130 gram vanilla flavored Liberty Greek yogurt. It contains about 21 grams of added sugar, which is equivalent to this cubes of sugar. And also, a one seven of Chobani's flavor almond cocoa local yogurt, which is only 120 grams, contains a hefty 12 grams of added sugars. And don't be fooled by their addition of uh, nuts and also by the addition of coconut in the food formulation because these are naked sugars, they are added sugars, so they are naked sugars which means that they don't have fiber or antioxidants to shield them from being released quickly into your bloodstream because they are naked and refined sugars, okay? They can cause an unexpected spikes in your blood sugar levels which means that there'll be an increase in your pancreas to release more insulin to get these sugars out of your blood into the, in the organs. So if uh, your pancreas is not able to meet this demand of insulin, that means that more of the sugars will be remaining in your bloodstream. And over time, this will lead to what we known as type 2 diabetes, high blood pressure, and also cardiovascular problems, and many other unwanted health problems. Isn't it amazing that yogurts are promoted as healthy and good food for the gut because they serve as probiotics, but the less amount of added sugars in this yogurt, they are no longer healthy for your gut. They now become detrimental for your gut. And let me show you how this amount of sugars can destroy your gut health. Excess sugars in your gut will lead to a condition known as microbiome dysbiosis. 
and microbiome dysbiosis will also promote the growth and survival of the bad bacteria in your gut, like Clostridium difficile and E. coli. Now, excess E. coli or the abundant growth of E. coli in your gut can lead to uh, the production of toxins. And these toxins are not good for your gut because they destroy the linings of your intestines. And the result of the destroy of the linings is that they can cause inflammation, gutty leaks, and also they, it leads to cancers. E. coli is also not good for your gut because they reduce the water reabsorption capacity and this will lead to diarrhea. Clostridium difficile will also destroy the lining of your colon leading to inflammation and also maybe it can progress into colon cancers. Clostridium difficile can also induce adverse effects like stomach pain, diarrhea and also loss of appetite. So my advice for flavored yogurt is that instead of choosing flavored yogurt or fruit on the bottom yogurt, you are best off if you choose unsweetened yogurt. Then you can add your own fresh fruit or nut to add a form of natural sweetness than going for flavored and or fruit on the bottom yogurt. Our second will be protein-based beverages and also protein bars. So in the current era of um, eating high proteins, having high proteins, snacks and all that, um, many of us tend to cut back on carbs and feed more on protein because we think that is healthy. So that may not uh, be bad, okay, but also let's not forget that proteins, when they're excess in the body, they are broken down into fat and they are stored in fat cells. So that means that if you have excess protein in your body, it can also cause weight gain. And secondly, proteins to a protein as gluconeogenesis are broken down into glucose for the body to use as a form of energy whenever you are lacking uh, glucose from carbs. So, and the problem with gluconeogenesis is that when they are overdone in the body, especially in people with type 2 diabetes, gluconeogenesis can lead to hyperglycemia. And this will also lead to insulin resistance and may lead to kidney damage and muscle loss if care is not taken. Okay, so uh, if you practice a balanced diet eating okay, uh, as a lifestyle, you are very limited to need an additional form of uh, proteins okay, to maintain your group and development. Unless you are vegetarian or you practice an active working out okay, lifestyle. So when you work out actually, actively, you shed most uh, of your muscles, okay? So proteins are needed to, you know, be broken down into amino acids that can help you build up your muscles back again. On the market, proteins from plants are mostly obtained from legumes like soybean and also peas. And the problem with soybean and pea protein is that they have anti-nutritional compounds that are also protein-based. And such as uh, protein inhibitors, they have uh, chemotrotin inhibitors, and also have lectins. Okay, and this protein based antimicrobial compounds reduces the stability of their proteins, which means there will be a low bioavailability for their proteins. So, this problem then creates the need for vegetarians or people who uh, depend on only plant based for their protein to need an extra form of protein like protein powders or protein bars to have a balanced meal and to have a balanced you know, amount of acid to keep their bodies actively growing and developing. I place protein bars and protein powders in the same category because most of them are formulated with thickness like xanthan gum and also with artificial sweetness like zolitol and also sorbitol. Okay. And uh, the overconsumption of this thickness and which has thickness can lead to a, a un unwanted digestive health problems like bloating, like flatulence, and like cramps. Okay, and this overlong period can cause inflammation and maybe lead to adverse type problems that you may not want. And also, uh, most 
Another problem with uh, protein bath or put, sorry, protein powder is also their formulation with artificial flavors like uh, red number three and green number three. Okay, and then this artificial flavors has been linked by many researchers in mice. Okay, that it leads to brain malfunctions, especially in children. Okay, it also leads to hyperactivity in children, and it can also lead to cancers, especially when they are consumed over a long period of time. Okay, so you have to avoid, you know, this kind of, uh, avoid artificial colors you know, as much as you can in your food products. So my advice for you would be uh, for you to practice eating a balanced diet. And also eat uh, food from different groups, okay, to ensure that you are taking in recommended intakes for uh, essential amino acids to ensure your growth and developing normally. But in case you need protein and powders or protein bars, I advise that you choose those that are not formulated with uh, artificial colors and also with those that are sweetened. Okay, because that will increase the color rate and also the need to other health effects that you don't want. And also try as much as possible to choose uh, those that have no uh, thickness. Okay, because the thickness, excess can also lead to inflammation of your guts. Okay. Our next stuff I claimed. Healthy food will be plant-based milk. So, for those of us with health concerns like lactose intolerance or vegetarians, or, or those of us seeking for low-calorie beverages, then plant-based milk have become a less safe food habitat. Although plant-based milk like soya milk, cashew milk, almond milk oat milk and you know all the other forms of plant-based milk that you're aware of they are all uh, excellent alternatives to uh, dairy milk okay but then not all of them are as healthy as you think especially when they are overused okay and yes why they're not as healthy as you think some plant-based milks are formulated with other sugars to enhance the taste and the mouthfeel of the milk okay so for instance if you look at Original nature is almond beverage. It has sugar cane cited as its second most dominating ingredient. So whenever you are checking your ingredient label, always have in mind that the ingredients are arranged according to the dominance of their formulating level. So it's from the highest to the least. The one at the bottom has the least formulating level, and the one at the beginning has the highest formulating level. Okay, so for this particular nature's almond beverage, one glass is equivalent to 250 ml and it contains 6 grams of added sugars. And the 6 grams is also equivalent to 2 cubes of sugar. So you have one glass containing 2 cubes of sugar. So you may be thinking that 2 cubes of sugar in one glass of land meat milk should be fine for you. Why should I change it? Okay, so here's why you may think about changing it. Because uh, one way or the other, their overconsumption will increase your calorie intake. And don't forget that your body will always convert your excess blood sugar into fat and keep them in fat cells. Which means that overconsuming plant meat milk that are sweetened with other sugars will definitely lead to weight gain over time. And that I'm sure you may not want that. Okay. And also, apart from they being able to cause an unnecessarily or unneeded uh, um, blood sugar spikes, their overconsumption over a long period can also lead to tooth decay. And I'm sure this kind of teeth, you don't want it. Okay. Some plant based milks are also formulated with uh, sugar alcohols like sorbitol and xylitol, okay, as artificial sweetness. So overconsumption of sugar alcohols can also lead to bloating and flatulence, okay. And I want you to please pay close attention to food that contains sorbitol and xylitol because the bloating and the gassing over a long period of time can lead to inflammation. And inflammation can be if not arrested um, at the earliest time as possible, they can also lead to adverse health effects like cancers you know, and, and uh, many unwanted you know, problems in the body. 
some plant-based milks are also formulated with um, thickness like carrageenan. So carrageenan is safe, okay, it's a safe food ingredient, but then according to research and from consumer reports, their consumption also leads to bloating and flatness in some consumers, okay. So please, I want you to, you know, at least police your own body to know how your body responds when you take a um, flat bench pills that has a um, collagen, okay? And collagen is added by the energy to improve the mouth feel, okay? Also, the thickness of the plants are big. Well, plant bench pills are naturally thin. So collagen is added to add a little bit of body to the plant and uh, to, to the milk, make it a bit thicker, okay? But you have to be careful. If your body, if you experience bloating, and um, when you take a um, milk that has uh, collagen, it's better you stop taking this because bloating, like I said earlier, can lead to inflammation in the gut, and that you surely do not, uh, do not want to have that adverse health effect. So, my advice for uh, plant based milk would be for you to take unsweetened, okay, plant based, natural, naturally unsweetened plant based milk, and that has, if possible, it has no thickness. That is, if I mean, if you, are, if you experience bloating. But if that experience bloating, then collagen is safe for you to consume. Okay. Take care. Keep making smart food choices. Okay. And guys, subscribe to my channel. And let's go together. See you in my next video. Bye-bye for now.